to us, like brand new homes, they're way more important to inspect than than the older ones. We wow, tell people that all the yeah. time because yeah. they are on their guarantee, right? So mm -hmm. we come up yeah. with a whole list, whatever it is, and it is they have to fix it. And I'm Jenny Woon. We have a special guest here today, our very special inspector friend, David Aslan from inspect.ca. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited. This is uh, such a great moment. Let's do it. <laughs> well, thanks for reaching out. I know that you're always out there. You have a great mm -hmm. team behind working behind you. And you generously put out a lot of videos and a lot of tips and tools for not just the homeowners, but also for the realtors so that we have great content and great knowledge when we're working with the buyers. So tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Mm -hmm. Well, my name is David Aslan. I'm originally from Quebec, up north in Quebec. I moved to BC in 1995 and uh, I went and took English as a second language. That's where I met my wife. Uh, she was from Japan and we've been together since then. Have you learned any Japanese? Yeah, lots. Yeah, <laughs> lots because we have two kids and it's always, she always speaks with them in Japanese. Mm. I always speak to them in French. Oh, so, so they speak three languages. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah, yeah. And um, so soon after I uh, was done with school, I ended up on construction in early 2000. Then I got stuck in there pretty much until 2016 or so. What were you doing in construction? So uh, I always wanted to start businesses since the early 2000s. So every time I had a failure, I pretty <laughs> much ended up on construction. So for a while I was uh, doing glazing, working with glass and, and, and shower enclosures and all that. Then I started another business, had another failure. Then I ended up doing some uh, concrete forming for a while. And then I would rebuild myself up, end up back on construction. <laughs> and then I spent about 12 years or so in the walls and ceilings um, trade, which is framing, drywall, vapor barrier, insulation, ceilings of all kinds. And then in 2016, I basically um, decided that that was enough and there was an opportunity to go and work up north in Kitty Mat for a whole year in a camp job. It was paying a whole lot better mm -hmm. and it would allow me to do some study in the evening. So yeah, that's what I did. I moved there for about a year, took the course. I didn't quite finish it. When I came back, I finished it and did all my hours in the field and finally got to be an inspector. But then I realized that um, you know, it's there's a lot more to being a home inspector than just being licensed. You do have to do marketing. You have to find clients. You gotta. So you still you ended know. up with a business, but you had so much experience in construction yeah. that mm -hmm. I'm sure that credited you. You know, it helped your inspection business. Well, you would think, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't quite help with any of the marketing or, sure. or knowing how to talk to people and being able to see where you know, where they're getting worried, if you can, you know, look mm -hmm. at their eyes, see where they're getting stuck and all that. So construction was good really in really just one way. It does sound kind of good as a home inspector when you tell your clients that you got 15 years experience on mm -hmm. construction. But in reality, uh, the better home inspectors are they're just a good communicator. People that are mm -hmm. people's person who can, mm -hmm. um, you know, talk to people and be presentable and, and be able to speak, you know, a good language. Right. And, well, you, your company has over 544 five-star Google reviews now? Yes, we just got the 45 <laughs> one amazing. today, for 545. Well, so tell us and our listeners a little bit more about what makes you and your um, business so special. Like, what differentiates you from the crowd? Yeah, so we actually do work to get Google reviews. So, I mean, our goal is we're not there just to do an inspection. We're there to offer an experience to the client. Most places, you know, they're pretty decent. We want to make sure that when we're done with the inspection that the client has learned as much as possible. Our focus is on education. So when we talk about a hot water tank, we just don't say, oh, it's working. Mm, we explain right. why it's like this, what needs to get done, what kind of maintenance needs to happen, how long it should last, where you should put water leak detectors in case something happened and mm -hmm. all, all that education. So by the time the inspection's done, they've got a lot of knowledge. 
And uh, because that's what we find, most of these houses, they're built pretty decently to start with. It's just the lack of maintenance yeah. that just mm. really just doesn't happen and allows it to start decaying and, and getting in the state that they often are, terrible state. For sure. How do you, go back to um, your background of like taking the course. Mm. So how long, like who's providing that course and how yeah. long does it take it? And is it credits or is it yeah, absolutely. a so grade you need to pass? Yeah, so there's a couple schools that offers it. There's one in Ontario that's called Carson Dunlop. That's when I took it, it was an online course. That's why I was up <laughs> north in Kitimat and I took okay. that course there. If someone's not working, <laughs> they can go to BCIT. There's a course there. It takes uh -huh. about a year. But most people that get in the industry, they already have a family. They already have kids. They can't really take two years off and mm -hmm. you know start studying. So they do it part-time. So that's why the course often takes a good two years to get it done. If mm -hmm. someone's really dedicated to it, do it full-time. It'll be about a year or mm -hmm. so. And then there's, uh, there's Douglas College also has a very similar course as well. And they're all very, very similar. It, ba it, it basically teaches what are the common things that happens with all the system on a house. And we're talking about the heating, plumbing, yeah. the roof, the structure, and all that. So it's great if you do have construction experience. Like I did have construction experience as a framer, but I really don't know anything about HVAC, electrical, mm -hmm. you know, structure, or anything like this. So you do have to learn all the other trades at the same time. And, uh, and then when, when you're done with your course, then... Uh, you have to do in the field hours. So you got to do 75 hours in the field with uh, a licensed home inspector who's approved to be a teacher. Mm. And this is all done through Consumer Protection BC. These, they're the one, they're run by the government and they regulate our industry. They came in roughly around 2016, 17 to regulate the industry. And it, and basically they're the one, they want to make sure that for us to have our license, we need to be insured to have a minimum of $1 million in insurance in case we miss something and mm -hmm. something goes bad mm -hmm. that the customer is protected no mm -hmm. matter what and then once we have all that they're the one who set us up with a license and it was just renewal two days ago and it's about twelve hundred dollar for a license per year for per year yeah it is fairly expensive oh, that's, that's like actually more than ours it's double because Wait. ours is every two years at twelve hundred oh right but if you're a prac it's more expensive yeah, yeah, well, but it's yeah, twelve hundred yeah, yeah. plus yeah, twelve hundred. That's right. right? That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so hmm. every year, how m do you have to take courses as well in that twelve months? Yeah. So one of the things that actually is lacking in this whole licensing <laughs> thing is the fact that they don't require us to take any ah. continuing education, which is fairly. Uh, but for us, we do do it anyways. Every couple of weeks, we always have one of our trade partners that comes in yep. and gives us a presentation. The last one we had was about electric car chargers, how they get installed, who Interesting. you know, how yeah. it can all be set up like this. Yeah. And then every time we make a new contact, now we've got a brand new plumbing company we're working with. Uh, they're going to come and do a presentation about maintenance and all the all the things that needs to get That's done lots around of the value. plumbing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because we need to, I mean, the houses, they're changing all the time. We do brand new houses that, you know, you see things that you've never seen before. You're like, mm -hmm. mm, yeah. what's yeah, that? I can imagine. Right? <laughs> and there's, there's nothing worse when a client asks you what this is, and you're like, I don't know. So yeah. you want to you wanna make sure that, you know, we, we stay on top of everything that's new and just constantly upgrading our knowledge. Well, we like that. We're, See, we're also part of the largest home inspector association in the world. It's called Internachi. They're based in the U.S. And they have probably over 10,000 hours of education about anything, log homes, okay. you know, anything oh. you can think about. So we have a non-limited amount of education we can take all the time. Yeah. And all our guys are all members of that association. Okay, so it's up to the contractor or inspector to sign up for these courses so that they keep abreast of anything that's new yeah, that's coming up. Well, the association actually, every few years, they want you to keep up with a bunch of credits, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. But not Consumer Protection BC, it's not one of their requirements, requirements okay. to get that done. And then you mentioned that you guys have guest speakers and things. What's your team, what does your team look like? Uh, structure, yeah, how so many of right now are you? Yeah, so right now, we're, we got lucky in the last couple of years to grow to a size where we can call ourselves the largest home inspection in the province. Oh, wow. So we have seven inspectors and, um, and we always have, we're always, we're constantly training. Right now, the market is not very busy, to tell you the truth. Uh, but we're still training people because we want to make sure that when things picks up that we can always have a couple guys that they're kind of floating. So if there's last minute inspection, we can make sure that we, we do that. 
Is it not very busy for you guys right now because there's so many subject free offers? Well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, actually, the market is down for us about 90%. Wow. Yeah, wow. It's, it's that is down. significant. I, we yeah. noticed that with the last increase, though, as well. The, ins you know, inspectors had less work because we're doing uh, subject free, but we normally try and get pre inspections done for our clients yeah, on homes uh, before they I offer. I mean, we, we've done a lot of pre offerings since November. Yeah. November yeah. is when it really started going down. But a lot of sellers are starting to um, to not having them. So right. well, also when they're spending five hundred dollars yeah. here, another five hundred dollars yeah. there, and they're not getting the home that they Eventually want, they they're like, okay, yeah. we're going to stop spending the five hundred dollars, and we're just going to write it subject free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Or we do a lot of after the fact inspection, mm. Uh, mm. which is great. We're grateful for them, but um, but it's good to know before you buy. I you think know? so. I mean, when we're yeah. <laughs> and and so let talk about Inspect Canada. Is it a franchise or is it your own brand? Yeah, so Inspect Canada is our own brand. Okay. It started right here in Burnaby, uh, roughly around 2018. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the goal is just to go across the country as quickly as possible. We didn't oh, call so it cool. Inspect Burnaby. We went straight with the country. <laughs> you went for the <laughs> yeah, gold mine. And, and, we, and we run it in a way where we want to expand. So everything Fantastic. is branded properly, all branded vehicles, and, yeah. and we offer a lot of value. So do you have admin uh, support for that then and, an, and okay. a manager that manages the team? Yeah, yeah. so uh, basically we have Crystal in the office that takes care of all the bookings. So when, you're, when someone calls, they're not talking to an inspector or anything like this. It's a full it's a staff and she takes care of during the week we have venice on the weekend we have my wife mickey who takes care of all the accounting payroll and all that she works awesome. directly with the accountant and i take care of the marketing and uh, william takes care of keeping the team together and and yeah and then we just do our best we just you <laughs> know, make sure that everybody's happy you talked about not knowing how to work on the business mm -hmm. you knew a lot about construction and and yeah. being an inspector on the field, but working on the business is an entirely different beast. And there's a lot of learning so curves true. to it. Yeah. You know, how do you get more followers? How do you get more Google reviews? Asking for the Google reviews, that's, that's one of the topics that we've had before is how do we feel, you know, how, how can we get that comfort level to asking mm -hmm. for more reviews and ratings? But um, what's your biggest lesson learned so far or advice that you can give someone who wants to start their own inspection business? Well, in in my personal case, I was afraid of talking to people. Like I was on construction, we didn't talk to nobody mm. the whole day. They just yeah. put me in a corner and just do this work there. And that's yeah. kind of how I liked it. And um, so I had a hard time talking to people, talking on the phone. Um, I didn't have any social media presence of any kind. Uh, so those were, you know, I mean, we, we all know that the things that you don't like doing are the things that are holding you back from success. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so you just got to jump right in. Uh, you know, I, I do a lot of self-study, um, like I'm a big fan of Grant Cardone and, oh, and yeah. Anthony Robbins, Brian Tracy and all that. So I read a lot of books and, uh, and they helped me tremendously. Brian Tracy with self-discipline mm. and, and, and you know, Grant Cardone with the 10x rule. Right yeah. now, we we have huge 10x. Uh, like we're all our vehicles are branded with the 10x logo on it. <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> a, even even our main logos got the 10x on it. It's, it's all about uh, you know, it's all about pushing what you're what you don't like and you know, and trying to get a little bit better every yeah. day. Yeah. Actually, before we go into our next segment, we mm -hmm. forgot, sorry, to ask oh, you the first. Oh, we always forget I, but this now, question. Yeah, we did. And we're going to ask it because I feel like he, uh, David's really in tune. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we ask an icebreaker question. The question is, what is your spirit animal and why? I would have to think that uh, it would be the raven. Okay. Um, I see them everywhere. You know, I find that I got a bit of a connection with them. Um, or just a crow in general. In Burnaby, around dinner time, I don't know if you've ever seen, but it's millions oh, of them yeah, that are yeah. flying over. Oh, Costco. Yeah, so yeah. Do, you, right? do you live in that area as yeah. well? Okay, well, I do closer too. closer to Highgate. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Which one's That's yours? where his business started. Maybe. Yeah, no, I know, but I'm just wondering if he also lives in the same area. He could have started it there and not live there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, his wife and his two kids are going to be in the business. I know. Soon. It's so awesome. He's yeah, going to go across already, Canada. Yeah, I got them little uh, Inspect Canada shirts and Aww. maybe some little how-to <laughs> videos cute. together. Even my <laughs> that sells. I like even that. my six-year-old daughter can do it. That sells. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So let's shift the conversation mm. a little bit and 
you um, you really, really do promote pre-listing inspections. And we were just talking about how the post, I guess, oh no, after you or right before you write an offer, the amount of uh, inspections that you're going to through the homes have decreased. So maybe, um, and now that we're talking about introducing the cooling off period, mm. I feel like the pre-inspection, pre-listing inspection will actually come important. really play an important role into this cooling off period introduction yeah. to the business. So my question to you is what does that pre-inspection listing look like and, and where do that where did that conversation start? Yeah, so when I started, um, you know, I needed to be different. I needed to do something that others were not quite doing, right? Because I was brand new and they already had business and I didn't know anybody and I didn't like to talk to people. So <laughs> you can't tell that now. <laughs> so, um, so I decided to focus on the sellers instead of the buyers. And then for multiple reasons. Um, for the last couple of years, we haven't really promoted pre-listing inspection a whole lot. It's mostly designed for a balanced market. Uh, if we, you know, we're still doing them once in a while, mm -hmm. but when it's a balanced market and uh, people have time to get their home inspection done, the buyers and all that, when a house is pre-inspected, if they're gonna, going to use the report and show it to potential buyers, whatever they learn from that report is no longer renegotiable once they get their own home inspection, mm -hmm. because now it's known by the time you do your offer. So it basically completely got rid of renegotiations, which was great for the seller. And, um, and also it gives the seller an opportunity to fix a couple of these things that might make the deal difficult to sell. You mm -hmm. know, they do have pest activity. A lot of people don't like that. It's easy to get it fixed. Just get the pest control company in there and then that's done in a couple months. Um, if there's active leaks, if there's anything, you know, that really people stresses that stresses people just fix it mm -hmm. or at least make it known yes. so that once they move in you know they'll just get it fixed so pre-listing inspection it's been good it was good when the balance was a little bit more mar uh, when the market was a little bit more balanced uh, but i can't wait to start pushing it again <laughs> so what we what we did at that time is we created a platform called preinspected.com where you would pre-inspect your, your listing. You would have a sign on your lawn that says the house is pre-inspected. Go to preinspected.com to download the report. Mm -hmm. And then when, they when the prospective buyer would download the report, the listing agents would get their contact information and they could contact them. It was a lead generator for a listing agent mostly. Right. And, um, and yeah, it was working fine. It's just that when it got super busy, mm -hmm. it became a little bit harder to sell. Uh, because it's new in the process, sellers are not used to selling, well, spending uh, to money. spending that oh, extra yeah, money, yeah. right? And and listing agents were not that crazy about paying for it either. Yeah. So at the beginning, we basically made it so just pay at closing. You know, we know houses sell no matter what. You know, you'll mm. get the other one that doesn't sell, but it wasn't the idea. The idea was just to push the concept and get yeah. people to use yeah. it. I would definitely encourage you, David, to reintroduce it mm -hmm. because with the cooling off period, my mind as a listing agent, I want that agent to show me the pre-approval letter. I want that agent <laughs> to show me, like prove to me that your buyer should be, like if we should accept your offer because I don't want any flaky, flaky buyers. Mm -hmm. In return, I'm gonna be like, this is the condition of the home. I'm gonna be upfront. This is what you're getting yourself into. And I feel like it's, there's a, a lot of transparency if there was that exchange of information. So I would, you know, I don't know if you can twist that somehow where it'll really benefit um, the listing agent and the, the seller to be really transparent with this mm -hmm. report. Um, but maybe, yeah, I don't know, if you want to get more like paid in advance without having to deal with the closing um, income yeah. on the on the closing level, like twist it somehow where it's going to be beneficial so that you're going to solidify like really good offers Quality, quality quality buyers, buyers that will not rescind. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a great idea. Uh, the, the only issue with a pre-listing inspection is that it doesn't offer the level of protection yeah. to the buyer that it would. Yeah, in but their you know case, what? Right? Yeah, that's true, and thank you for bringing it up, but it does go the case for transparency. And also, uh, sometimes when you have certain things happen with a listing, those buyers can go in, they, it just makes them feel better. It makes them feel oh, comfortable. Sure. It and it actually helps the, the home get sold, sometimes for a better price. This is where you would push your value yes. of, 
of um, I know that you said that there's this motto if you miss it you fix it mm. uh, there's this buyback guarantee so maybe there's that added value um, spin to it of of even though the seller was the one that paid for the report it benefits you to have this report too and and maybe if they hire end up hiring their own inspection the report is either matched or maybe you found more things than that than the other inspector did mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah there, yeah there's possibilities there um, <laughs> we wanted to ask you as well about something else that you have newly designed I don't know if it's actually brand new um, yeah, but is, is it the virtual home inspection yeah so what happened is as you're well aware a lot of inspection just gets skipped in the last little while especially condos people mm. yeah they say ah, it's a condo small, whatever yeah. right New. even though you find all kinds of stuff in there yeah um, you know if in this type of market people often just skip it we wanted to make sure that they do get some kind of protection anyways so we know that most showings are roughly about 15 minutes for condos mm -hmm. so we created this course to show them exactly what to look for uh, in that 15 minutes it's mostly designed for list for buyers agents so that mm. they can let their clients mm. take a look around it, it it shows them what pictures we need under the sink take pictures of the Smart. everything else if you see any stains or anything like that so we teach them it's a one hour course that gives them one free uh, one self accredited pdp credit it comes with a certificate at the end you just submit that to the board and then um, i should give you your credit and then what if they want at the end of that they can upload their pictures on our system and they can book a half an hour consultation over zoom with a home inspector and then we can go through all their findings talk to them about this and that and if they have any concerns we can address them and it's basically it's a consultation mm -hmm. uh, more than anything else and it's designed just to offer some extra protection for the client it also allow us to do that north america wide overnight mm -hmm. you know so it, it's uh, it's and it's one of those things again that it just sets us apart you know it's a so mm -hmm. you said that you uh, there's possibility of getting the pdp credit uh, is there is there a cost to it as well or just PDP no, credits? No, so all okay. our education is completely free. Okay. So uh, the domain name to get to it is called freepdp.com. So, okay. <laughs> so basically... <laughs> Wait, how many URLs I do know. you have? <laughs> yeah, no, I've, I've always been a big fan of domain names and investments That's and stuff funny. like that. So uh, whenever I can get a good one, I like to get it. So if you go to freepdp.com, we're adding course all the time. Uh, we've got a great one that's coming up uh, that's called... Um, what to expect by year built so you can if you know that the house I is downloaded built, that it's in mm -hmm. 1972 or yeah. something then they'll tell you all the things to look for so that mm -hmm. you can do your own due diligence when mm -hmm. you go there go in the utility room check it out see what you if mm -hmm. it's been upgraded or not yeah so we like I mentioned earlier we really want to focus on education and, and tell the truth it's so much fun to do it that, uh, <laughs> you know that's that's what I want to do all day long yeah it says that's here awesome. like environmental asbestos between mm -hmm. 1920 to 1990 lead paint banned in 1978 the older the house the higher the chance like the chart is is very clear on mm -hmm. what someone should be looking for and it's very very useful and that's a one-hour presentation we do in offices we mm -hmm. talk about all of these um, sections in the in the in the chart mm -hmm. and uh you know what's bad about it what can be done about it mm -hmm. we're very solution oriented so I like that. so whenever we do a home inspection we're you know it's not all about deficiencies. It's about, you know, the questions from the buyers is always the same. Do you know how much it's gonna cost me to fix this? And do you know someone who can fix it for mm -hmm. me, right? So we wanna make sure that we never say no. So <laughs> so we wanna make sure that, you know, when we inspect, we, we, we tell them how much it will roughly cost to fix it. What are the problem with not fixing it? And, um, and we even have videos to show them on how to fix it themselves. Right. And who wouldn't be a better person than yourself who's done quite a bit of construction work? Um, now, I know I don't want to take away too much time away from Inspect Canada, but you also mentioned earlier that you have a handyman business. Yeah, we, we run a handyman business called smalljobs.ca. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so do you have one that's bigjobs.ca? No, we okay. don't want to do bigjobs. I'm going to buy that do, domain right we, now. It's small jobs only. Okay. We, uh, we're in and out within a day. Okay. And the goal is to bring enough of a crew to whatever needs to get done to have it done in a day. The this is a very useful service. You are by like, far, yeah, I'm putting you, I'm putting <laughs> that into my phone and follow, because For everybody sure. needs a handyman. We do. That will take on small jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Like, keep in mind, it's, 
none of the inspectors are handyman or anything like yeah. this. There's a separate company, completely separate, okay. separate crew. Okay. And, um, and it's basically the same kind of uh, energy and professionalism that you get from Inspect Canada. So fully branded people, well groomed, uh, show up in branded cars and all that. <laughs> and, um, you know, we, we train them from scratch. And uh, so it, it's been going very well. Yeah. Wow, great structure. Um, so Strat Insurance have skyrocketed over the past few years mm -hmm. because there's been so many flooding, there's so many yeah. um, non-disciplinary residences who live in Strata, high rises and low rises, all, all, all above. Can you tell us more what you've noticed um, uh, in the way that homeowners live in their homes? So that way we can start helping the, strat the insurance companies to save money? The insurance companies, they should push on a whole lot of stuff. Like, we, we notice it right away. As soon as we get in a high rise, you'll have low ceilings in the hallways with sprinklers in there. Yeah. When we know that people are moving in there on yeah. a daily yeah. basis, holding mattresses straight up, they get Just busted the little all cages the time, on. right? So <laughs> the cage is something that uh, we always recommend. On every job that has sprinklers, you should have. I, any sprinklers that's installed should have a protection around it. It, mm -hmm. it makes absolutely no sense not to have it. Or mm -hmm. stop hanging clothes yeah, off exactly. of that, or right? Christmas decorations. So <laughs> you know? But yeah. when they have those cages on it too, I, I believe it does decrease on average the Strata Corporation's insurance, right? Because it's more protection. I would have to look into this, but I would think that they would all do it because they're not exactly. very expensive. Those baskets, like, and they're easy to install. It would it'd be people a people have to see job. the value, the value yeah. in it, right? I've never had an insurance company ask, "Does the sprinkler system have a cage around it in order to reduce my premiums?" Um, well, because a lot of buildings also don't make it mandatory, mm -hmm. right? It's possible, but think about it this way. So you said that it's inexpensive, but think about it this way: in one apartment, you could have. I don't know, five different sprinklers, five multiplied by the cost of that, and then all through all the common hallways and everything, right? The stratas are thinking, oh, the overall cost is going to be, it adds up. And the protection value of that is so important. So there's the short cost and then the long-term value. I'm a big advocate of those. I think it's a good and idea. And also, to I deal with a lot of developers yeah. who want minimalism. Like, they're like, it's got to be looking clean. It's got to look symmetrical. And sure. And, and so they don't want to put the cages on. But there are mm -hmm. other types of sprinklers out there that are oh. conceived. Yes. That you yeah. see just and a little white cap, right? right? They are a little slightly more expensive. Right. Yeah. Just do it. Anyhow, but you know? it's a and good th question. But there's other things as well. Um, you know, we see most laundries and stratas do not have a drain around them. Mm. Right. You know, there should be a pan at the bottom with a drain. That'd be easy to install that when you're building this, when you're putting the building together. Tell you know, your builders. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Well, the pan will only hold so much. But the pan would have a drain as well. Yeah. A drain yeah, into yeah. it, okay. But yeah. if you have a pan only, no drain, which is still pretty decent because you can put a water leak detector in it. Mm -hmm. right. And then if it triggers, then you can have a good water leak detector that even shuts off your main water. Or at least it'll call your cell phone and say, hey, something's going on mm. here. Come and check this out. Is that right? something you could buy at Home Depot? Uh, we Well, probably. I think they have a few brands, but we buy them from Amazon. And mm -hmm. they have like... 30 different types and okay. you know from 15 bucks to a couple hundred bucks sounds like a very easy but when solution we, when we do uh, inspect brand new fancier kind of house mm -hmm. the whole house is designed so that if there is a leak somewhere it you shuts can the detect water it right off. away from yeah, the laundry exactly. water heater yeah it just shuts the water right off mm -hmm. No, that this is this needs to get done, especially in stratas. Rubber hoses on laundry. It's big the first dangerous. thing, so and they school. have uh, them still. Yeah. You know, there's still toilets that splits in half out of for no reasons, oh. and uh, you can imagine it just shoots water for the, you know the whole day long. That that's disgusting. <laughs> I was gonna say that's so gross. And, and, and everywhere, yeah, you hope they flush it first. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> but you would think that anywhere that there's water involved, like a bathroom, for yeah. example, that the floor would have a waterproof membrane under it of some kind. Yeah. Because yeah. you dump a little bit of water just beside your bathtub and yeah. it'll make a stain on the guy downstairs. Absolutely. Right away, right? It's so, so expensive to remedy, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, and absolutely. no one wants to.
wants to take responsibility. The yeah. strata blames it on the person upstairs or the downstairs, and then insurance. the strata unit tries to go back to the corporation. Yeah, like <laughs> which wall is it? Is it a common wall? Yeah, and and yeah, then they, it gets messy. They, they, yeah, absolutely. They try to find all kinds of ways to, so to pay for it. I have a two part question because we were just talking about strata. Um, but the first part of my question is what's the most common thing that you guys have seen as of late in a detached house? Um, that requires the most maintenance that sellers potentially neglect. Is there anything specific? Well, the, one of the big problems with homes is that homeowners should take a course. When they buy a home, they should know what how to do. How to maintain with these and absolutely. clean and They're seasonal. buying them. Most of them mm -hmm. have absolutely no idea what to do with these houses. Um, you know, they'll have often HRV system, their heat recovery ventilator, ventilation system. It's a great system but they don't replace the filters in there for years. Yes. So, so oh, eventually, yeah. and often builders, please talk to your builders, they throw <laughs> them in the attic. Nobody goes in the attic. Yeah, they're not going to know. know. Yeah. And um, and there'll be filters for the AC system often yeah. in the attic too. So that that's a big problem right there. Also, homeowners, they never go in their attic. And uh, leaks and, and mold and pest activity, it all starts very slowly. Mm -hmm. They could catch that right at the beginning if they check maybe two three times a year or yeah. something like that right okay but they never uh, we go in houses that have been built 30 years ago and there's no footstep nowhere in the attic you're mm -hmm. the first guy to ever show up there so when the dryer exhaust disconnects in there five it's years later then now it's yeah. it's a f it's fully molded okay well the second part to this question is um in your opinion what should a homeowner upgrade immediately um that would increase the value of their home if anything mm. Uh, you know, there's so many houses with old furnaces because the old furnace don't want to die. They just keep going. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they got to change the filter all the time on yeah, those. <laughs> yeah, and they, when you open them up, there's nothing in there. There's nothing to break. Like the old air code, they're the green one that you might see on the old ones. You know, they'll last hundreds of years, you know, oh but, but they're highly inefficient. So for every dollar oh. of gas you put into them, about 75 cents goes straight up the flue. It goes okay. up with the, with Interesting. the gas. Good yeah. So they're very, and also the heat exchanger in there where the fire happens, it may crack and then you get carbon monoxide through your registers. Oh. So a lot of people live in homes that are, you know, they, they're feeling sick in there and they don't yeah. quite know why. And it's often because of these old furnaces. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, totally. I would never think it would be the furnace because I've always imagined like older furnaces to last a lot longer than the newer ones. Yeah, because so, of yeah, you have to service them. That we ha I have an old furnace. We mm -hmm. service it all the time, and we change the filter more often than they say to because mm -hmm. I've noticed that you know it's probably not as efficient anymore, but it does work. Well, that's, and that's the thing too. When people are buying brand new homes now, the houses are so expensive. We're like, you know what? This is going to work for a mm -hmm. while. We recommend you replace it, but uh, just yeah. do it later because, yeah, yeah. you know, you burn your budget right now. Yeah. And there's often smaller things that needs to get done right away. So there, that was one. Is there a couple more that you would recommend they would do something right away to increase the value? Uh, in terms of increasing the value itself, I'm not too sure, but in case... Uh, but in terms of making the house better, mm -hmm. like drains, like people like they have so many bad drains. Like last winter, you know how much water we got, Chilliwack remembers, yeah. right? And uh, a lot of houses, because we do drain inspections, we have all the equipment to do drain inspection. We put a camera into the drains and we see if they're collapsed, broken roots, intrusions and all that. And, and most of the place that we inspected f the drains last winter, they're houses that had never, uh, had any flood before and mm -hmm. it was for the first time in like 50 years yeah. so uh, drains eventually they get all clogged up whatever falls on your roof ends up in your drains and uh, and if you don't clean them up ever eventually they no longer work and water finds a way in your basement this may be a really stupid question but why do they call it drain tile tile like yeah, it's because where does that <laughs> tile word come from? Yeah, actually, I think we're thinking of tiles as a as a tile you put on the in the shower. Or right, something exactly. Like that, right, so but it, it came, I believe, from what they used to call it the whipping tiles. And when you look at the old clay tiles, they only came about in twelve inch, fourteen inch length. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they called those whipping tiles, and um, and that's where the name kind of came from. I guess I'm not too sure why they called those tiles, okay. but yeah. they were clay, and I guess maybe they were making tiles out of clay in the old days. Uh, you know what? I'm not too sure. <laughs> okay, but that's good to know. Though. I'm glad that you mentioned that you guys have cameras and things like that because normally when we're dealing our team at least with older homes, it's something additional that we have to suggest that they do. 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So then mm-hmm. we're going through two different people. You have to st- And also, you know, working with one company, since we're already doing an inspection then there in most cases, yeah. we can drop the price massively on that. So our drain inspections, um, they're in the three hundred dollar range where okay. a plumbing company would charge they're five expensive. to eight hundred. That's right. That it's range. like starting and at also, four. Yeah. Right. And then for us, we're we're a third party, we're unbiased. We're not there to sell you a new drain system. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's why you know, people don't get roofers to inspect their roofs because they'll tell them they need a new <laughs> roof right away, right? They use us. Yeah, and and uh, last summer we had a, a massive heat wave, mm-hmm. and yeah. the thought of putting air conditioning in homes just became a greater demand. Yeah. I know you mentioned earlier you're not a HVAC specialist, but just in general, what have you seen in terms of the trends that are happening uh, with newer homes now or, or homes that are old and that don't really have the mm-hmm. venting that's re- ready to go? Yeah, I would have to say that most older homes were using a furnace, yep. you know, so they have all the duct ready to go and everything else. So it's an easy, mm-hmm. it's an easy setup. Mm-hmm. We have to understand that a furnace, in most cases, it's a one zone system. So you turn it on and it heats the entire home. Mm-hmm. So it'll, the cooling yeah. will be in the entire home as well, even if you're just sleeping in your bedroom on the second floor at night Mm -hmm. right Uh, nowadays most newer homes they do tend to use in-floor heating right now when you have in-floor heating you don't quite have any duct for that so you might have some duct for uh, the hrv system and everything else so straight from the beginning they do have to set up an ac system in there if 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 the house like a lot of house from the 90s had in-floor heating but they had no ventilation in there there's not a whole lot you can do in terms of duct. So you can install what they call mini split system. So there are more zones. So you would put one in your master ba- ba- bedroom for at night. So it's mm-hmm. a, maybe one in the living room or something. Mm-hmm. It's a bit of a pricier kind of system. And you might have seen it in the condos where you have a remote and they open up yes. and, uh, and they close down. They can give you heat as well. So they're a bit of a heat pump kind mm-hmm. of system. Oh, okay. uh, so people install those if you don't have any duct work or anything but if you have a furnace boom that's an easy setup right there oh yeah good that's yeah. a great solution it's electric too so you do you do need to have you know a good yeah. panel if it's an older home and you mm-hmm. know you've used most of your electricity you got to keep that in mind mm-hmm. yeah but um but yeah people's i mean there was i don't think anybody were able to get an ac last year they had a massive <laughs> waiting list right and yeah. absolutely yeah well um so david you mentioned that you're really focus on education, which I think we can definitely tell that you're very passionate about educating the clients. Um, You also have a few other courses online. Is that right? Do you want to tell us a little bit more about those? Absolutely. So if any uh, real estate, I mean, they're all free. So anybody can take them. It's just that it's a benefit for the real estate agent to take them because I'll give them a credit. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, you know, I I wish I had more uh, because it's just really time consuming to set it up and all Mm -hmm. that, but I will have more. But right now we got a one hour presentation about deficiencies that we find on brand new homes. So Mm -hmm. very often brand new homes don't get inspected and, um, and you know, they are under warranty, you Mm -hmm. know, it's, which is good. But the thing is very often people start finding things, then they call the builders and he says, okay, no problem. I'll send some guy. And then they just keep calling every week, every time (laughs) they find something. And then the builder stops picking up the phone and, and now everybody's mad and it just creates problem. Now they call the two, five, 10 and they just, (laughs) it just creates, (laughs) it escalated. (laughs) Yeah. It just creates all kinds of problem. Right. So it's best like, you know, to us, like brand new homes, they're, way more important to inspect than than the older ones we wow, tell people that because, all the yeah. time because yeah. they are on their guarantee right so mm-hmm. we come up yeah. with a whole list whatever it is and it is they have to fix it and i think uh, some of the problem because i usually work on the selling side i work for the developers that generally the inspector's not allowed in um before completion mm-hmm. so you're like coming after alert. yeah completion and generally the developer doesn't want to re- to receive another list that was um different than the orientation walkthrough which yeah. w- is supposed to be more of a pleasurable walkthrough and minimal deficiency um findings versus you're coming in as a bad guy, right? Yeah, yeah, and being for sure. like here's the long longer list of things that you did not discuss with the buyer with the new homeowner. Yeah, I mean those walk through uh, you know they're done by homeowners and real estate agents so they don't quite know 100% what to look for. Obviously, you know, it's true that they're not they're not the happiest to see us there. But it's in their best benefit. It's in their number one benefit. If if every brand new home would get pre-inspected they would do so much better. 
what we see out there is always the clients always there's no clients out there that bought a brand new homes that tells all their friends you got to use my builder you know in most cases oh don't use this guy he's just you know he doesn't want to talk to us or whatever it is but if they get the place and that when we inspect these houses very often we're like look we found 50 deficiency on this brand new mm -hmm. home so now they're thinking geez what kind of place is this so mm -hmm. they're not too happy with that to start with and um so it you know if the builders got them pre-inspected while the while their workers are still there because very often we'll do that on brand new homes there's still some guys around so they'll fix it right away and now we would tell the client look this place you know when they get their home inspection they'll be wow this place i didn't find anything i found just a couple little mickey mouse kind of items they would think the builder's the best they yeah. would tell all their friends about him yeah. reputation quality you know right now this is what's lacking out there they uh, this you know they should see us as an I have a question about that, actually. Are you, um, we're talking about pre-builds, I guess, but are you thinking that this is important for all brand new builds, including condos and development? Or are you thinking more so townhouse and single family Most brand new townhouses homes? townhouses Because that's, family. yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking too. Yeah, I know on your, on the high rises, they, because of liability, they yeah, kind of like to, to, they like to do it at possession or anything like this. But in reality, on a condo, the client could wait a whole year to get that done anyways. And mm -hmm. there'll be other things that will come up during mm -hmm. that year. There'll be cracks, things like this that mm -hmm. they need to, to get checked out. Mm -hmm. But homes, townhomes, Absolutely, these should be pre-inspected, come with an inspection report. And earlier we talked a little bit about pre-listing inspections, mm -hmm. which is kind of what that is, right? Uh, and you talked a little bit about our buyback guarantee, mm -hmm. right? So we do have a buyback guarantee where if we miss anything, mm -hmm. we'll buy the house back. And that can be as small as a GFI outlet that's not working. Of course, it would probably be a little bit of a mixture of someone that has remorse as well and all that. And it happened in the last few years that some wanted to take advantage of this. Mm. And we went through the process and they decided to keep the home anyways. But we do have that. So if something happened, because I mean, nobody's 100% perfect out there. Um, if they're not happy and, and they wish they didn't buy the place and, you know, maybe the inspector missed something, then our guarantee can buy that house back for 100% of what they paid for. But if we do that as a pre-listing for the seller, it transfer to the buyer as well. But that's good for 90 days. Let's keep that in mind. Okay. Yeah, so if Very the builders would, um, mm -hmm. you know, would use it, then the 90 days would transfer to the buyer. If the mm -hmm. buyer's not happy after two months or whatever, and they find things and they just wish they didn't buy it because something else opened up, whatever, then yeah. they could take advantage of that. Hmm. Yeah. And so wh these courses that are PDP approved, um, are they, are you talking with the real estate board to mm -hmm. produce yeah, so these materials? No, actually we're not working directly with them. So. Mm -hmm. As you know, there's two types of PDP credits. There's mm -hmm. the self-accredited and the accredited one. So mm -hmm. the accredited one happens at the board. Uh, we were hired two years ago to create a course for the real estate industry that would that would be accredited. Uh, yet we still have COVID and all that kind of mm. mess that up. But we, we're still in discussion with that. So we were with we the board wanted a few things. So I asked them what they want. They want that you cannot skip over the videos. You have to have a test at the end. So they took those courses mm -hmm. and um, they're not they're not really allowed to promote them to to mm -hmm. their people but if they send them the certificate then they will get their one mm. accredited, I mean self-accredited I'd credit. be interested in taking them obviously I think it just well, helps clients as well and it's good to have a brush up on all this yeah, information and I find that most agents you know they're always last minutes with their credits so if they need <laughs> some they don't need to go somewhere pay for it they just go home in the evenings and they can take four course right yeah. there and uh, we're really the only one that has online courses for that most mm -hmm. cases there's zooms or things like that right yeah I appreciate that you putting that together so I know we'll it have, takes a lot of work yeah but we'll have eventually we'll have like 20 of them and then yeah. you know that's, that'll be that one place you can go take whatever course you want Absolutely. and just get your clients to take them we'll, we're we're working on a course right now to help homeowners on how to take care of their homes Good. teach them the things they need to look for and everything else and um, you know because that's that's what we find every deficiencies we find on your home is mostly lack of maintenance mm -hmm. that's all it is tell us um the cost of inspecting a condo a townhouse a house and uh maybe even a virtual home uh home yeah. inspection yeah so you know for us we want to we want to push on values as opposed to price we don't want to be expensive and we definitely don't want to be considered cheap mm -hmm. uh, so we're average we normally we look at the pricing that's happening out there and then we just go average on that and so roughly um, 
a condo inspection is roughly around three hundred fifty dollar. Mm -hmm. A townhouse is about four fifty, and a house is about five fifty. Mm -hmm. A virtual inspection is a thirty minute Zoom consultation, and it's one hundred dollar. Mm. Okay. Drains inspections are three hundred for the storm for the rainwater, three fifty for the sanitary line, mm -hmm. and uh, and and we do mold and all kinds of stuff. So that's in the three hundred dollar range as well. Oh, and so okay. we've got all kinds of stuff going on. Say more about the mold. The mold. <laughs> yeah, so we, we have uh, brand new equipment to do mold sampling. Well, indoor air quality sampling. So there might be more than mold in some place, maybe some asbestos and maybe some other stuff. So yeah, we have guys that are certified to, to do mold testing. So if someone, as part of their home inspection, wants to make sure that the air is, is good in there and there's no hidden molds in the walls or anything like this, a lot of people are very allergic to it. Mm -hmm. Some have kids with asthma, things like that. They're very concerned about all these things. So we do have, we offer that service. So it comes with cassettes. It's basically a pump that sucks the air through a, a sticky kind of membrane. And then we send that to a lab. Uh, there's labs all over the place, but there's a bunch here in Burnaby. And um, next day we get the result and then we mm. interpret the result for the client. I was just gonna ask the okay. turnaround time. Last question, sorry, just about mold because I have you here <laughs> right now. Uh, how common is it for you guys to encounter mold in attic spaces? Oh, geez. It's pretty oh, common, wow. right? Like yeah, they're- It's bad, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, old attic in general uh, on the north sides will tend to get darker and maybe get spotty and maybe a little bit of mold grow. The thing is that when you get an asphalt shingle roof put on your house, they'll tell you this has a 25 year lifespan. So most people will, you know, and in reality, you only get that if you do the maintenance on it every year. So, you know, if you get debris, moss starts growing on it, things like this, it keeps the roof humid all the time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that humidity transfer to the plywood on the other side, if it's plywood, because it could be some OSB, which absorbs a lot more. And, um, and then it just starts deteriorating slowly. So if people did change their roof early, mm. as opposed to when it water leaks. starts showing up, right, we wouldn't have these kind of problems. And also, if they did look in their attic at least once a year, then uh, they would know if something disconnected because you got all kinds of stuff going through that mm -hmm. roof, right? So you just, and, and a leak, often you're not gonna find out for a very long time mm -hmm. because you know there might be 16 inches of insulation in, in the attic you can imagine it's gonna have to be to get very wet yeah and then you have a plastic poly on top of the drywall so you could dump a whole bucket right there and there's a good chance you might not even see water showing up on the other side so by the time you see a stain it's been leaking there for a while mm -hmm. and then uh, all that moisture really just molds up the attic very quickly Thank you for Thank answering you. that. No, you're very welcome. The beauty of it, though, is most molded attic have no pest activity. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what I'm going to say. There's, there's probably not a lot of pesty creepers down up no, there. No, they can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> or so they were the, there, and they're the all dead. Lining. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, yeah. we have five rapid-fire questions for you. And um, if you were not a home inspector, what career would you be in? Uh, well, mm, I guess I would be, uh, well, if I was starting from scratch, I would probably be a vet. <laughs> oh. I just, I just uh, you know, I, I watch cat videos all day long. That's all I do. <laughs> You should, you should uh, hang out with I my one and a half year old. That. She loves that stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, I would. Uh, I would love. Still, you know, in the future, I would love to. Um, you know, to be able to have even a, a sanctuary for cats that have nowhere to go or anything like Aww. this. I just, I just love That's cats. Amazing. I love them. If we do an inspection, there's a cat there. Guarantee. Oh, okay. <laughs> Guarantee's gonna get it. Brayden, you gotta get your cat out yeah. in here. What's the craziest or scariest thing you've ever found or inspected? in a home? Well, I think I was very surprised at one time when I opened, uh, I opened the attic and oh, a no. mouse jumped right yeah, on I me. Was gonna say. I, I was like, I guess it was right on the panel. It got stressed out when I lifted out and it just jumped, but I took the panel off and it fell right on me. Oh. And, uh, and I didn't quite know what it was. But I knew it was moving, so I got all oh, stressed out. I, and like I was it. on the ladder, and I almost fell right off. But it's better than in the U.S. A lot of guys had the same 
story with snakes. They get snakes oh, in the attic. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, scary. You know, once in a while, pe there, people hide their Halloween decorations in areas where you don't expect it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so something like moving or something? just open a door and then boom, something happened. There, Freddy's right there. I guess this job would not be good if you have arachnophobia. I don't. I have no. arachnophobia. Do you? No, I don't. Oh, I don't no, want to be you an don't, inspector. You don't want any kind of phobia in that, yeah. in that train. <laughs> you can't be afraid of height. You can't be afraid True. of spiders, mouse, or anything like this. You can't be afraid to talk to people either. <laughs> uh, get get into tight spaces, crawl spaces. Yeah, so claustrophobic. It is, it is a field, uh, you know, f for you have to be fit. In, mm -hmm. And you, you have to be able to get in places where, you know, it'd be tough Fair for enough. a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Fair yeah. enough. What's your favorite inspection tool that's provided you with the greatest return on investment? That would have to be an infrared camera. An mm -hmm. infrared camera, there's still companies out there who'll charge you extra to use them or don't even use them. Um, and to me, like, it's, 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 it's a pricier kind of tool, but it allows us to do such a better job yep. uh, that, you know, it doesn't matter. Even if it did cost five times the price, it would still be good to have it. Have you ever detected any ghosts using that tool? Well, <laughs> if, 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 I, sometimes, possibly, yeah. <laughs> no, we, we see uh, it's, it, it measures temperature. So, yeah. um, you know, it's just a great tool. Uh, yeah. to find any hidden leaks, yeah. leaks that, you know, you look at it, you don't even see it, mm -hmm. but you caught it with mm -hmm. this, right? Mm -hmm. And you know that this would have triggered a phone call later on. Yes. You know, so it's it's great to, you know, How to much does that unit cost? Well, they sell toys versions of these things that mm. are hooked up to a phone and things like this are in the three to five hundred dollar range, but they're you need a good they're one. not very good. Yeah, it's 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 like a moisture meter. You don't want to go for anything cheap. The moisture meter we use are around nine hundred dollar or so, and they they give you accurate reading and they're very right. very precise. And the needles like. <laughs> On, on zero, not like on another number, right? <laughs> yeah, when you start it, yeah. No, no, I got this camera, on this. An infrared camera that is kind of okay for our industry, mm -hmm. like they go all the way up to 50 grand or whatever, but mm -hmm. in the three to four thousand dollar range, you get a pretty decent wow. one. That's a good and investment. they do last a very long time too, yeah. they last years. Yeah, yeah. Um, and final question How would you describe yourself in three words? Motivated, uh, you know, hungry dedicated mm. i guess that would be it yeah we just want definitely all just, shows and all the different businesses in your wanna, else you've secured <laughs> yeah, we just, just want to keep growing uh that's the that's the best part of it and being able to uh, to offer this life to other home inspectors you know to be part mm. of our team and, and getting busy doing this they came from jobs that they were not very happy with and um and we try to provide with as much value to them as well we have medical dental all that kind of stuff we okay. we want to make sure that their family's taken care of if they fall off a roof so it's Ooh. all wcb and all that yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's very important to to be able to offer them a good working environment with education all the time and if they have any problem we're always there to listen um, and with that um i'm going to ask ask a sixth question if someone's graduating um, as a professional inspector and they're contemplating to work solo versus joining your team, mm -hmm. what is one thing that they are going to get out of out of joining Inspect Canada? Well, if they don't join, they'll have to compete with us. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's good, just not a good, good idea to start with. Yeah. Uh, but, it, you know, first of all, it is a tough market to get in there. There's companies like us that are well implanted in there that yeah. we have a lot of relationship built. It's not impossible for someone to go on their own. I can, st I still see people doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, but very often they have a niche like in their, let's say, you know, their culture or something like this. Um, it's if they go on their own, they have to. I would, you know, it's like every business out there. You know, the be the, the most successful home inspector out there is not the best inspector, it's the best marketer. Mm -hmm. And mm. so it, it all comes down to that. So if you got zero marketing skills and you're not crazy about talking to people, then join a team. I still have, uh, I still know mm. of one inspector that still handwrites all his reports. Yeah. Old school. Yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, he's been in the business for like 40 years. 
Yeah, no, so I, I mean, yeah, exactly, because it, it'd be tough to just switch for yeah. these type of people right now, yeah. No, there's a, and that's why, you know, when people call us and they say, how much is it for this and that, it's not about the price. Not mm -hmm. every home inspection companies are made the same. Mm -hmm. They don't, you know, do the exact yep. same inspections. There's a lot of guys that don't go on the roof. There's people that don't go in the attic. Right. Crawl space are just too tight for them. I don't know any inspectors there's, like Or that. appliances. Do you, do you Yeah, we do appliances. appliances. Yeah. It's very important. Appliances, yeah. they're big on leaks. Yeah, and um, you know they would, yeah, dishwashers. They leak all the time, but but they're trouble. Like they'll mm. they'll work for you, and and they'll start leaking the yep. next day. So for sure, we're a very at risk kind of yeah, industry, right? Sure. You can imagine, like often, you know, all these dry stains that we find all the time. You know, there's a yellow stains, fully dry, and everything. These things eventually will start leaking again. Mm -hmm. You know, something happened to create those, and if you don't see a repair, mm -hmm. it's something waiting and. So it triggers phone calls a lot. So a lot, a lot of what we do is, is also it's you know to provide all the details of the house to the clients in the report, but also to prove that what's working and what's not working, so that mm -hmm. if it does stop working, that we're not hooked to fix it. Mm -hmm. Because that's the thing, the home inspector, unlike city inspector, for example, and that's why brand new homes are loaded with deficiencies. Mm -hmm. It's because they're not liable for their mistakes. For us, we are. Mm -hmm. So if we miss on something, we have to pay to fix it. So that's why our motto is if we miss mm -hmm. it, we'll fix it. Mm -hmm. And instead of saying, well, it wasn't like that when I was there, mm -hmm. or maybe there was something was in front of it, I didn't see it. Nobody's right. ever happy with these kind of answers. And that's how we got, we kept our reviews five stars mm -hmm. at 545 today. Because <laughs> if there is a problem, we go and we deal with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. One quick thing though, we said sixth question, but we never went back to do the other one. Oh, so. inspecting a famous person's house whose house would it be well if the dalai lama has a house oh, i would love to inspect it and i would cool. love to meet him at the same time too and i think it'd be so clean it'd be so easy <laughs> so min it'd be so Minimalist. you know yeah nothing in there right yeah. so no dishwasher yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing yeah i would just love to, uh, well, to meet the guy serenity. yeah yeah for sure david thank you so much for taking the time Thanks to be with to us today yeah. i'm very I've grateful for the opportunity and i wanted to meet you ladies for a very long time so yeah and where can our listeners find us find you yeah so i wanted to keep it as easy as possible so mm -hmm. i didn't go with uh you know david aslan home inspection and burnaby.ca well that wouldn't <laughs> be very business minded right <laughs> yeah there's a lot of that out there though yeah. but uh so i went directly for the category name so we we own inspect.ca so you just go to inspect.ca you'll reach out our website all our contact details are there but we're also um you know, we're pushing social media a lot. Mm -hmm. We have thousands of educational videos on our Instagram. We also have thousands of pictures of happy clients with us there on our Instagram. Mm -hmm. So Instagram is a great place if people want to learn a few things about us, uh, you mm -hmm. know, about things to look for on houses and learn, you know, maintenance items and things like that. We also have Facebook. I just started TikTok. I'm always a, mm -hmm. a late, I, I'm always late on all these things. Uh, but now it seems like TikTok's a little busier than Instagram. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're going on that. But, um, and also right now we just created um, a Facebook group, the Inspect Canada Facebook group for all our clients and agents that uses us. Mm -hmm. We invited all our trades in there as well. So there's roofers, plumbers, stuff like that. Okay. So if anybody has any questions, because for our clients, and the, our referring agents, we want to be their personal consultant. So right. if they have any questions any time, uh, you know, for the clients once they move in, what is this, or do you think I can do that, or do you know somebody that could do this, then they can go on our Facebook group, ask any questions they want, mm -hmm. and we post a lot of educational videos on mm -hmm. that as well. So it's a support group awesome. for this whole project. I must say you are definitely a lot, you're approaching this business in a lot different way than any other um, mm -hmm. inspectors so appreciate that Yeah, we want to run it like a business you know a business that wants to grow across the country and, and, yeah. and if everything goes well we'll go in the US as well well there you awesome. go folks uh, their IG is inspect Canada and your website is inspect.ca um, also smalljobs.ca as well yeah yeah right? if, if anybody needs any kind of handyman type of work and also our YouTube channel mm -hmm. uh, so you know, if, if they need to replace outlets, fix leaky drains, anything like this, and they want to do it themselves, we have educational videos for pretty much everything in there. Awesome. awesome. Thank you, David. Thank you. We appreciate Thank you. your time. Thank you. Thank you.